All right, guys, you want a quick tip about Premiere? I'll give you one of my best ones. A while ago, I made this video about how to get into Premiere Pro's effects panel search bar instantly using a single button press. It's actually called the Find Box, by the way. But the method that I used was really, really stupid, and I found a much, much better way. So let me just show you the fully baked casserole here. Bam, you're already in. You're already in. And you can type out crop, and then move that over there, and ta-da. Now you have everything that you've ever wanted. It's just great. So, how did I do it? Well, it's very, very simple. All you gotta do is combine together two shortcuts that do exist in Premiere to make one that doesn't. The first shortcut is Window, and then Effects. And I have uh, added Control-Alt-Shift-7 to this. The default is Shift-7, but that's an ampersand. So anything that types out a real letter or character in a macro is a terrible idea. So I've added Control-Alt-Shift-7 to this. Boom. And the same goes for the Find Box. No, yes. Find Box. The default shortcut is Shift-F. And I have added Control-Backslash, which is the one right next to Backspace. So, okay. Now if I, I can do this manually, 7, control it. But that is slow. You can just make a macro to put those together. So anybody who already knows how to make macros, you can stop watching right now because you already know what to do. Uh, but anybody who doesn't know, you keep watching, and I will explain everything step by step. It's going to be just fine. You probably don't have a Corsair K95 RGB. <laughs> so I'll show you how to do this using Auto Hotkey instead, which is a free program, which you can get right here on this website. I'll have a link in the video description. Download that. Now you might get a virus warning because AutoHotKey is so powerful you can make viruses with it, but it itself is not a virus. It's just a scripting program. Anyway, you download that, then install it, and then what you got to do, just go to the desktop, right click and say new auto hotkey script, but I don't have that here. Uh, so I'm just going to make a new text document. I kind of messed it up a little bit, but we're going to call this Premiere Effects Box. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but you do have to do dot auto hotkey, A-H-K, enter. Yes, that's an auto hotkey script. You can double click on it, but nothing will happen because that's not a real script yet. There's nothing in it. So right click and say edit with notepad. I have notepad plus plus, but regular notepad is just fine. So here is where you combine all the things. So what we're going to do is first you type out uh, single instance force. Yeah, uh, don't worry about that right now. All it means is that when you double click on it again, that it won't bother you about it. And then you got to type out hashtag if when active Adobe, wait, Auto hotkey underscore, you would never know this, underscore exe adobe premiere pro dot exe. And what that line does is everything underneath it will only work if Premiere Pro is active. Hmm, very nice. So you can also do if when active by itself for commands that will work in any program. So for example, I'll put on F5, I'm just going to put message box comma hello world save and then to launch this you, where did it go to launch this all you got to do is double click on it now it is running down here there it is f5 hello world so you know that your auto hotkey script is working when you do that you don't need this line you can comment it out using one of those so what we want to do now f1 colon, colon. That means we're assigning a thing to F1. Now we type out, well actually you need multiple lines for this. So when you do multiple lines you need to return at the end. So now we type out send input, comma, control, shift, alt, 7. That's what that means. Those are special characters for control, shift, and alt. Then send input, comma, Control backslash save and you're done. That's literally it. You're already done. Double click on this to get it running and you didn't get an annoying text box popping up because you have this on. 
go to Premiere, hit F1. You're already there. How hard was that? Right, so you can, you can hit that button, and then you can type out crop or whatever, and then click on that and move it over to where you want. And now guess what? Now you've got a crop effect. How easy was that? Now you might be thinking, okay, but if I hit it again, crop is still highlighted, so I still have to like type out stuff, Lumetri. What if I want to delete the text that's already in there? Oh, I'm glad you asked. At the very end of the macro, you can have, as a third thing, you can have backspace to clear that. But don't do that. Backspace is dangerous because in the possible event that you don't actually end up in this little box here, you might accidentally delete stuff. That's what backspace does. But if you do shift backspace, nothing gets deleted. So if you're in the effects search box though, and then you hit shift backspace, the text does get deleted. So basically you just want a thing to delete text that won't accidentally delete anything else if anything else is selected. And that's why we're going to use right here, send input, comma, shift, curly bracket, backspace. Ta -da! To double click on that again to get it running, and let's just test it. Brr, brr, brr. F1, and you can start afresh. Awesome. So you're done. But you might be thinking, hmm, what if I don't want to have to type out crop? Couldn't I have the macro type out the word crop for me? And you're right, you absolutely can. All you need is one more line. Send input, comma, crop. It's just that easy. Controls S to save. Double click on it in a, again to get it running. And now, let's just put some garbage text in here. F1. Look at how easy that was. So you can do this for anything you want. You can take this, and uh, by the way, I had this other script running just to show you what was possible. Uh, yeah, I have F3, I have F4, F2. Um, but I'm going to close that script now that was running down here. That's my fully baked casserole. What you can do now, just follow along, is you can duplicate all that. You can say, okay, it's fine. For F2, I'm going to do, let's say, um, let's say the mosaic effect. Save that. Go back here. Double click on it. It's Windows key D to go to the desktop and back. And let's look for F2. Okay, mosaic. Okay, so that works. You can do that, but it's inefficient when you're coding to just copy paste a bunch of stuff, you know, F3, and I can have this be blur or whatever. This is stupid. It's far better for you to make a function. I will show you how to do that right now. So instead of all this, no, 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 uh, just take, take one of those, delete all that, and we're going to call it find box, twiddly twiddly, curly thingy, another curly thingy down here, uh, and now you need a parameter. Let's call it the text, copy, paste. This won't work. It'll just type out the text. You need it to be in those to indicate that this is a variable, which of course it received from the parameter thingy land. So let's do F2 now. F2 colon colon find box. We can now just call our function. Put the little parentheses there. And you do need quotation marks for this. Let's just do a corner pin. It's a fun one. Save back here. Double click on it to refresh that script. And let's try F2 corner pin totally worked. So you can uh, make as many of those as you want, and now it's really easy. Uh, control D in Notepad++ to duplicate a line. You know, you can also do, you know, you can do your blur, you can do your duplicate, you can do your uh, three-way color duplicate, you can do your uh, lumetri color, and each of these needs a different function key to go from, and you don't have to use function keys, you could also use like control, uh, control shift P or whatever if you really wanted to, but that's kind of annoying to press. 
Uh, far better to assign that to a macro button, for example, right here, you can assign that to Control Shift P or something, and then have that trigger this, and then it's just one button to trigger that function. Very cool. And uh, you might need a sleep 10 right here, just a pause for 10 milliseconds while Premiere catches up from deleting text in the find box, and then you can continue on with your script. So notice I just had to do that in one place because I'm using a function, and now all of these will do the exact same thing. Save that, and you're good to go. And one of them you want to save as, uh, let's say, you don't want to do it like this. Instead of this, all you got to do, find box, da -ba -da -ba. put nothing in the find box if you want a completely blank thing to go from. Double click on that. And F1, it just clears it out. Isn't that just the bee's knees? Now you might be thinking, hmm, you know what, Taryn, that is pretty awesome and you're so attractive and wonderful and great, but what if I wanted to also have the script bring this over to here for me? Well, now you're getting to some next level over here, and in fact, I do have a four-hour long tutorial where I explain precisely several hundred auto hotkey Clipping. scripts. This next auto Shut hotkey script, me. you're going to see me using const constantly blah 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 blah. There's the script. In the what box. it does is it check it out. It does that and then it grabs it. Watch this. Watch the mouse. It clicks down there in the middle just to clear the thing. This is very very slow motion. Very very slow. Moves it over and applies it. Ta-da. And you need, like I said, you need some fancier code to do that, but it's all available from my GitHub. So this is just a little bit of a, a gateway drug for you to do the simple macro. And when you want to get into the hardcore stuff, then you go to all Premiere functions and you can type in preset and here's all the code. It's totally free. It's totally great. I use this every single day, several hundred times a day and it has saved me hours. There's one final thing you gotta do if you want to do the auto hotkey method. Uh, and that final thing is, you see this thing that we made here, our Premiere Effects box uh, thingy, which is kinda stupidly named? Create shortcut to it, and it appears over here for some reason. And then what you gotta do is you gotta go to your startup folder, which is really hard to find, Here's where it is. I'll give you this text. Go here and put it in the startup folder. <laughs> now, it's possible that you have two startup folders. This might also be your startup folder. I have no idea. I think it's this one. It's hard to know. But if this is here, then it just has the effect of Windows will double-click it for you, basically, when you start your computer. And so you'll see it down here. There it is. And you can also refresh it by clicking and saying reload. And, uh, and you'll have your macros forever. That's my trick. I know it wasn't quick, but if you already knew what you were doing, then it is quick, and that's my quick tip of whenever. I really needed to update this one, so <laughs> that's what this is. Bye-bye. Have fun.